Hello everyone, what's up? It's me again, Junkmaster3, and uh, I'm back with another update video. Uh, the thing is, I've actually already made this update video, but when I made that f uh, video, I actually realized that I had some films in the mail which I had not received yet, so I decided to redo the whole video just so I could include those titles as well, because I just feel that it would have been really weird to just have a small, small update video with only like three titles or so. So that's the reason why I decided to do like this instead. Uh, most of these are not horror related, surprisingly, but there's still some of them. And uh, I'm gonna continue with, the, or I'm gonna start with the films that are not horror related, and then the, I'm gonna end it with the horror titles. So uh, yeah, let's begin right away. First up, we have a film which I actually watched on TV the, for the first time, and right after I saw the end credits roll, I was like, okay, I really need to have this film in my collection because I loved it so much. And uh, that, that film was Strange Days by Catherine Bigelow. And this has an amazing cast. Ralph Fiennes, Angela Bassett, Juliette Lewis and Tom Seesmore. I really like the whole setting in this film. Uh, like the filthy and the rich basically. Like there's like this type of sci-fi type of atmosphere. Sort of similar to Blade Runner in a way I would say. I mean at least a little bit like that. Uh, but my favorite character in this entire film is definitely Angela Bassett's character. Uh, Ralph Fiennes is really great as well, uh, which has the main, like, the lead role in this. So, uh, yeah, this one is really amazing. I think more people she should see this one. So, yeah, Strange Days. And then we have a thriller film. This might be a horror thriller type of deal. I'm not too sure. But this has Shelley Hack in it, who, who was also in... One of my favorite horror films from the 80s, The Stepfather. Uh, the film is called Blind Fear. Never seen this before and I think this might have been one of those made-for-TV films. But yeah, this is from the late 80s. So uh, yeah, might be good. So yeah, Blind Fear. Then we have a film which I've always wanted to see. But for some damn reason I never was able to find it. I only found The only re release that I've actually found for sale, like everywhere, is basically this Steelbook release. And um, I'm not too sure there might be some like older release of this one which I've just missed out on. But uh, the film is uh, Backdraft. Uh, basically, I think this is based off of true events, um, which is really scary. I've not seen the film myself yet, but uh, it's basically about this arsonist, I believe, which was like around in the 90s or late, late 80s, I believe. So, uh, yeah. I'm looking forward to see this one because I've heard I've seen some of those documentary films not documentary films but documentary like uh, forensic files when they've talked about some of those cases with arsonists going around in this city so yeah the next one is a film called hysterical blindness this was mainly bought because it looks like a 80s throwback film or at least it seems like it's yeah it takes place in the 80s but it was actually made in the early 2000s. This is also a made for TV movie I believe so yeah. This ha also has uh, Juliette Lewis and uh, Uma Thurman in it so yeah. Then we have a, this is a blind buy, this is a thriller film from the early 90s. Uh, a film called Body Shot with, uh, what's his name, Robert Patrick from Terminator 2. Uh, complete blind buy, I mainly picked it up because I think it might be hard to come across and I thought the the old storyline was sounds pretty damn interesting. Then we have a film which I watched on TV. I only watched some bits and clips of it because I was so tired when I watched TV. So I just shut it off and I was like, okay, I need to get this one somewhere. But realized that it was out of print, but I found it for a really good price. And that was the reason why I picked it up. And that film is called The First Night from the mid-90s with Sean Connery and Richard Gere. So yeah, might be some awesome fun. Awesome fun. That sounds really weird because I think this is more like a adventure drama type of deal. But yeah, then we have a film which I'm probably gonna butcher the title of, Lucky Number Selvin or Slevin. I'm not really sure, but uh, always wanted to see this one uh, mainly because of the cast: uh, Josh Hartnett, Morgan Freeman, ben, ben Kingsley, Lucy Liu, Bruce Willis, among others. Uh, yeah, some gangster drama action film or something. So yeah, then we have a film which I. Mainly because picked up because of one of the actors in this one. And I can say right away, this is probably my all-time favorite comedians of all time. I just think it's really unfortunate that he passed away so early. 
Um, and uh, for those of you who know me well, probably already know what actor I'm talking about right now, but the film is Cool Runnings with John Candy, none other than John Candy. He is he was such an amazing actor and I always found him to be funny. So many comedians today try way too hard that it just it just gets annoying and really irritating. But John Candy he was he was one hundred percent funny in my opinion. And uh, yeah, cool runnings. Never seen it but always wanted to see it. Then we have a film directed by John G. Avildsen, I'm not really sure how you pronounce his name, but this is by the same guy who did the Rocky film. I think he only did the first one or two Rocky films. And then he also directed the first Karate Kid film. And uh, this is his film called Joe. And this has Susan Sarandon in it, and I think this might be one of her very earliest roles. Um, and the thing is, this looks really controversial, but there's like one thing with well, a quote up here, which but it's actually in Swedish, but it says, shoot every goddamn hippie. And we have this lunatic on the front cover. Uh, so yeah, probably going to be awesome. So yeah. Then we have a film which is, I think this takes place before the other film I have up here. Hell's Angels 69. I think that's the sequel to this one. But this film is called Hell's Angels on Wheels with Jack Nicholson and I think this was one of those films that were banned in Sweden at the time when the whole studios and the video violence that they just wanted to ban so many films because they were too violent and you would be a serial killer if you watched some of these films which was really stupid it's sort of like the same way as in the UK with the video nasties and uh, one th an interesting thing about this one is that the this one has the president of the Hells Angels in it and I think he I think he served as like some was it, it was it stunt double or something or was it was he was involved in the project in some sort of way I think he was he was in getting all the filmmakers the facts that they needed and needed to know about Hell's Angels while making this film so uh, yeah Hell's Angels on wheels then we have a, another blind buy basically I mainly picked it up because of the actors once again uh, that tends to be the scenario for me when I pick up some movies in general uh, this is another one of those films which was released in the late 80s, early 90s. Um, a film with Fred Ward, Alec Baldwin and Jennifer Jason Lee. The film is called Miami Blues. Never seen, but uh, I'm a big fan of Jennifer Jason Lee in general. So that was the main reason why I picked that one up. And then we have a film by Sam Peckinpah, which unfortunately I haven't seen too many of his films. I think I've only seen one or two of his films. I have seen Bill the Kid, what's it called? Pat Garrett and Bill the Kid. But that was like on TV like ages ago and I really need to rewatch that. Uh, but this is his film called Bring Me the Head of Alfredo Garcia. I'm not too sure if this is like a more modern day type of western film. It just, he looks way too modern to be like an old, old like western film in my opinion. But um, yeah, I'm not too sure. But anyway, Sam Peckinpah, I've heard he's like a, one of very, very 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 underrated director in general so uh, yeah he also made that other film what's it called Wild Bunch I believe which is another film with, that I really need to watch as soon as possible so yeah bring me the head of Alfredo Garcia then a film which is this is I don't think this is directed by John Carpenter this is actually directed by the same guy who did Mac and Me surprisingly um, did not know about that before. No, wait a minute. Is that the same guy? I'm not too sure now. I'm just mumbling here. But the film itself is called The Philadelphia Experiment. Um, yeah. I haven't seen yet. But looking forward to see. Seems like I'm repeating myself over and over again. But that's how it goes sometimes. Then we have... This might be more of a horror thriller type of deal. It says thriller. But yeah, some thrillers actually do categorize as horror films from time to time. Depending on who you ask. So... Uh, but this is the film called Roadkill with uh, Steve Zahn, Lily Subinski, Subieski, I'm not really sure how to pronounce her name, and Paul Walker, who, yeah, all of you already know what happened to him. Um, this is a, this apparently has like two or three sequels as well, so I might see if I can find them for a pretty good price if I like this one. Uh, Apparently this has goes on another title as well, I believe, but over here it's called Road, Roadkill, so, uh, yeah. And then the next one, we have a box set, actually, which 
some of you might ask yourself why the hell did you pick up this box set if you don't like the first one well it was ages since I saw the first one so I was willing to give it another shot and I think the sequels to the first film is pretty damn hard to come across in general and another reason why was because it's an Anchor Bay release and the box set is the Angel Collection I've only seen the first one once and I did not care too much for it but I'm ready to give it another chance because I always wanted to see the sequels to that and that was the reason why I picked up this box set so yeah now finally we're off to the horror films which there are not too damn many horror films in this update so sadly but that's how it goes sometimes uh, first up we have a film with which is called The Seasoning House the premise to this sounds really fucked up and really screwed up um, but yeah this has Sean Pertwee in it and I remember after I bought Dog Soldiers I was so like amazed by his acting and I think his acting in Dog Soldiers was really really amazing and after that I just wanted to get more and more films with Sean Pertwee so I started to get more and more into that actor I tried to find more films with him and I uh, watched Wilderness and all of, all, all of those other awesome films that he appeared in and also the Mutant Chronicles which I think is a very very underrated sci-fi action film but yeah I've never seen this one before and yeah don't know what else to say about it I haven't seen it yet but yeah then we have a double bill uh, a film called Lurkers and Die Sister Die Lurkers I believe is directed by Roberta Finley and let's see here Nick, um, Die Sister Die I'm not really sure how, who directed that film but um, yeah 80s film and 70s film so yeah sorry I just lost tra track there for a moment then we have an Australian film I believe or at least this is like an Australian release so I'm just assuming it is an Australian film but yeah the film is called To Make a Killing might not really be a straightforward horror film I've been told that it's sort of like a terror film or revenge film but uh, yeah we'll see how it goes To Make a Killing then we have a film by a director which I think I've seen one or two films by but this is one of the films that I've been on the hunt for for quite a long time to be honest and that film is Frightmare just look at that cover art I have actually seen one or two other films which has also been called Frightmare but I don't think any of them were that good to be honest especially not the 80s or early 80s one I did not care too much for that one to be honest but uh, yeah this one I've only heard good things about so yeah Frightmare and I think this one was also on the I think that might have been on the video analysis list I'm not too sure but yeah then we have a complete blind buy the main reason why I picked this one up was because I've heard it's supposed to be like a vampire film the film is called perfect creature never seen but yeah I'm a sucker for vampire films in general no pun intended I know it sounded really weird but yeah then we have another Anchor Bay release uh, of a film called the ghost in the machine this is directed by the same director who directed Freddy's Dead um, uh, Nightmare on Elm Street part 7 which I think no part 6 I believe sorry part 6 which many people claim to be the worst in the Freddy franchise um, I don't think it's a like really like amazing film or anything but I just think it's way too bashed on I don't think it deserves all of that hate that it, just, that it got so uh, but yeah this one this premise to this one sounds really amazing I think this sort of reminded me of another film called Hologram Man which I think has a sort of a similar premise so yeah Ghost in the Machine now finally we're off to the last two titles and the last two titles are also horror films but they are on VHS so and I don't think any of these films has actually gotten a DVD release so that's another reason why I picked these ones up on VHS first up we have Evil Altar this one was mainly bought because of the awesome cover art and because it was made in the 80s and it was a horror film and I've never heard of it before so this is a complete buy, blind buy so this might turn out to be a complete piece of shit but I don't really know before I've seen it myself so yeah evil altar and the last one I picked up was a slasher film which I've always wanted to see because I'm a sucker for slasher films and especially those slasher films that were released were released in the early 80s so uh, the film is called Ghost Dance 
and once again the cover art just look at that cover art it's just so amazing in my opinion really awesome so yeah that's the last film for this update so hope everyone enjoyed and uh, hopefully i'll get to the top five of the month for the next video and after that i'm not really too i'm not too sure what type of video i'm gonna do after that i'm probably gonna redo the code red collection overview because the latest one i uploaded was quite glitchy if i remember correctly and uh, yeah i've also been thinking of making a top 10 horror films of the past decade like from 2010 up to 2019 so uh, yeah we'll see how it goes that's just in the future and we'll see if, if i ever get to those videos so but hopefully i'll do so hope everyone enjoyed and i hope to see you again as soon as possible so see you next time bye bye